Hey everybody, Kurt Navis here with Real Estate Wealth Coaching and today we're going to do a video that is geared primarily for new real estate investors who are, you know, maybe entering the world of wholesaling and they're looking to do their first deals and we're going to talk about how do you come up with the formula for what to offer on property. Now before we get into that, uh, we're putting out a lot of new video, a lot of great content. If you wouldn't mind either clicking the subscribe button, make sure you follow us. Uh, you'll, know, you'll know when we put out new video, new content. Also if you like this video, make sure you click the little thumbs up, like button, share it with a friend. Uh, feel free to share it on social media. We really appreciate it. So with that being said, <clears throat> we're going to talk about the offer today. So we're going to kind of cover what the basic formula is. We're going to use some examples. Another question is, is does this formula work for every deal? You know, there's lots of different price ranges we're talking about. Does the formula work throughout different price ranges? We're going to look at that and see if it does. And then another thing I hear a lot of people talk about is, is wholesalers will sometimes have a, a minimum fee that they would like to make minimum per deal. So maybe it's 2500, maybe it's 5000, 7500, 10000. I'm not really sure. We're going to talk about that a little bit and we're going to see how that may play in to how you make your offer. <clears throat> All right, so the basic formula and I've kind of written it out it's very similar. I've written it out two ways. It's just in one step I actually included another level to it. So essentially the formula is is once you determine or come up with what you feel the after repair value or market value of the property is, uh, you you figure out 70% of that. So you you know you'd take the ARV times 70%, whatever that number is, you minus out the repairs. You know, so depending on the repairs, is it, is it a five thousand dollar renovation? Is it twenty thousand? Is it somewhere in between? It's hard to say, but you take that number out. If you want to take it to another level. You do the same exact formula when you get to repairs, you also then subtract out the fee. And what the fee is, is, is the wholesaler's commission. So if you're a wholesaler and you need to make $5,000 per fee, you need to also back that out of the transaction. And that is essentially what you would offer to the seller. So if you look at an example down below here, we're using $100,000 uh, ARV as an example. So 100,000 ARV times 70% comes up with 70,000. Estimated at a $20,000 repair uh, renovation repair, that 50,000 represents that's what your buyer could pay for the house, meaning you need to get it lower. So if you look at the next line down, you take that same formula and you add in, say, whatever your fee is, 5,000. Now, essentially, you need to offer 45,000 on this particular property and get it under contract, assuming that all these numbers are accurate and correct, that's where you would need to be on this particular transaction. So uh, this is kind of the general formula that a lot of wholesalers use when making offers. Now, I can tell you that a lot do not follow this just by a lot of the offers I've seen in a lot of property that come across our desk from wholesalers, but uh, nevertheless, this is a this is just a guide essentially. <clears throat> All right, so if your cash buyer is a fix and flip company, maybe a turnkey provider, someone who's going to buy the house, fix it up for resale, a lot of times they have a standard profit margin that they like to make in these deals, and usually it's very similar whether it's a cheaper property uh, or a little bit more expensive. So um, repair costs and profit margins do not work on percentages. Um, and like I said, we're going to show some examples uh, here in the next few slides on how, how this plays out. And will this standard formula work for every situation? We'll see. <clears throat> All right, so oh, no, I see what's going on here. Okay. So this first example here, you know, now I'm in the Memphis market. And it's not uncommon that you see flippers, turnkey providers selling a house for seventy thousand. So, if you got a seventy thousand ARV and you factor in seventy percent out of that, gives you forty nine thousand. Assuming that it's a fifteen thousand dollar repair, 
you're left with thirty-four thousand dollars. So thirty-four thousand represents what your what your cash buyer can buy this home from you. So you need to get the property less than thirty-four thousand. Um, and, and this is where I think it gets tough when wholesalers say that you know they want to make ten thousand dollars minimum because essentially that means that you would need to get this house locked up for twenty-four thousand. And I'm not saying that that's not unrealistic or it won't happen because it can and will happen, but uh, this just gives you an idea of where your cash buyer is going to offer on this particular property, so you need to get it lower. $100,000 property, same formula. With this example, $100,000 minus the 70%, factor out $15,000 in renovations, leaves you with $65,000. So that's where your cash buyer can buy this property from you at sixty five. dollars you need to get a little bit less. $150,000. Follow this formula. 70% of that is 105. Subtract out the 20,000 in repairs. You're left with 85,000. So, in theory, 85,000 is what your buyer can pay. Now, we're going to look at this on the next slide and break this down to see how this actually works. But one final example. I feel like with the 70,000 to 200,000, I've covered a large range. Uh, of properties price ranges that will work over a lot of different markets. So 200,000 minus 70% gives you 140, subtract out 25,000 repairs and the reason why I upped the repairs a little bit is usually on houses that are going to be in and around this price range the houses are a little bit larger, they're nicer areas so a lot of times renovation costs are going to be a little higher. Uh, you factor out the repairs, which leaves 115,000. So in theory, on a $200,000 ARV, your cash buyer can offer maximum of 115,000 on this one. So the question is, is, does this work throughout all these different examples? Well, if you looked at the $70,000 example, uh, running a example formula on how we would typically buy properties, this $70,000 example, I could pay around $30,000 for it. So in this first example, the wholesaler needs to get the property a little bit less than that. My max offer on that would be around $30,000. So they need to get it a little less, say $25,000 to make five grand. On a $100,000 example, I'm ballpark in it at around $60,000. So can they get it for $50,000, $55,000? Possibly. $150,000 example. Uh, run the formula says 85,000. Now, if you look, my max price on this one for my formula is around 100,000. So, in this example, it's quite possible that the wholesaler might have a little easier time getting a property like this, or maybe we'll make a larger wholesale profit potential. And a $200,000 example. Uh, in the previous slide, it was 115000 if you followed the formula where the cash buyer would be able to purchase a property at. But for my example, following the same similar formula, I would be offering around $140,000 on a $200,000 property. So if it's possible for a wholesaler to get a property that cheap, they could make a sizable wholesale fee. I mean, I'll give you an example. Um, I live in Germantown, Tennessee, which is a, another suburb city east of Memphis. And I want to say about a year and a half ago, a wholesaler brought me a property that I wanted to purchase and I wanted to keep it for a buy and hold. And the price they offered it to me was 205 as is. And it wasn't a stellar deal, but it was a good enough deal for me to line up private money to purchase the home cash. And when I got to the closing table, I noticed that the wholesalers had this home under contract at $140,000. So they were making a $65,000 wholesale assignment fee from this transaction that I purchased from them. So deals like that do exist. They're, you know, $60,000 profit deals are, are, I don't want to say few and far between, but they're, they're not the norm. Let's just say that. So, um, but that, I wanted to put this slide together so that you could kind of see how these same deals would work for someone like myself. All right, so, you know, in wrapping this presentation up, 
the formula that you see that, that, that I've talked about in this presentation, it's, it's really a general guide. What I actually suggest is, is as you're wholesaling, as you're getting started in your business and you're building actual cash buyers, I feel it's important for you to learn what your cash buyer's formula is. Um, like, for example, uh, you know, a rule of thumb for me is $45,000. So if, so if the wholesaler can determine what the market value is, you know, where I would roughly be buying, or where I would roughly be selling the property at, on average, just as a guide rule of thumb, if they take that price and they subtract out 45000 that's roughly where I would have to buy this property. So they know that they would need to get it lower. And, you know, as a wholesaler and you start building your cash buyers list, everyone's going to have kind of a different criteria, different formula, depending on how they're, what they're going to do with the property. Maybe the Maybe they'll do a, a lesser quality renovation than we will, or maybe they'll sell the house for more than we will. There's just so much that kind of goes into it. But if you can educate yourself and learn what your cash buyer's buying criteria formula is, it will only help you in the long run. Plus, it'll also help you so that you're not locking up deals that have a, a very small spread. And Because the last thing you want to do is really put a house under contract that's not a good deal that you can't sell and you have to end up walking away from the property and then you don't also want your cash buyers uh, thinking that you're only getting deals that are not good deals and then you know kind of lastly be flexible with your desired profit I know that we all want to make as much as we humanly possibly can but uh, if you know just be flexible sometimes wholesalers make a thousand dollars on deals sometimes they make twenty thousand plus I'd say the average wholesale deal, at least in our market, for what I'm seeing a lot of times, is in and around the 5,000 to 7,500 on average per deal. So that's going to kind of wrap this video up. If you thought this was a decent presentation, go ahead and feel free to click the thumbs up, like button, make sure to share it, subscribe to our channel. We're trying to put out a lot of great content like this. So we appreciate you watching, and we will see you in the next video.